Greetings, welcome to introduction to linear regression, correlation, and residuals part two. So we're going to continue our study of whether or not a linear model would fit a particular set of data or not. And we'll do that by taking a look at a problem from the textbook. In particular, we're going to take a look at problem 7.4, where they give us a set of scatter plots. And they ask, based upon these scatter plots, by the way, these are not residual plots, they're scatter plots. They ask to identify the strength of the relationship, whether it's weak, moderate, or strong, in the data, and whether fitting a linear model would be reasonable. Okay, so I've made a copy of these. We can actually draw on them, which will be a little handier for what our purposes are here. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's switch over to that particular picture. And what we see here on the first of our um, slides here, let's go ahead and change my color to red again, is that on um, part A here, that a line would not be a good fit. There's a very strong relationship here, as we can see by the line that I'm tracing over it, but a straight line would not be the fit for that data. So going back over here into our studio, we'll go ahead and type that up. So on part A here, we would say that it has a strong, there's definitely a strong relationship. Strong like coffee, okay. And, but it's not linear. So remember in this chapter, we are only concerned with linear fits. We're not concerned with nonlinear fits. That's a more advanced technique. And we're not gonna discuss fitting nonlinear models to data in this class, but uh, maybe if you take a subsequent stats class, you will. Okay, let's take a look at part B. And again, we see we have the exact same thing going on here in that um, we have uh, a nonlinear trend. Okay, so let's get it back over where we can actually draw on it here. Okay, and so what we see again is that we have a strong relationship, but a strong nonlinear relationship. So again, go ahead and type that up, and we can just go ahead and you know do the smart thing here. Work smart, not hard. And we'll copy and paste it here. It's again, it's a strong nonlinear relationship. Okay, well, the third one, lo and behold, we finally came across one that looks like it has a strong relationship. And by Jove, I'm saying that that looks like a nice linear fit. In other words, remember, linear means line, okay? So for course videos that hopefully you watched out back at the beginning, there was a nice comment about that. So we would say, again, I'm just going to go ahead and paste it in, but I'm going to say, this time, say not linear. And I'll say instead, I will say reasonable to put a linear fit. So a linear fit would be reasonable for a linear model. Would be reasonable, OK? All right, so let's see. We've got a couple more of these to go. Let's go back and take a look at the drawing. I think we'll knock a few of these out a little quicker here. So on these three, what we see in this particular model on part D and part E in particular is that it's kind of like a cloud of gnats, isn't it, right? And so here we would see that the relationship between them is going to be weak. There's no real simple easy to see trend like in the upper first three models. But that said, I mean, I could come in, you know, just by eye, I'm thinking, all right, a linear trend there would probably work. Okay, same idea over here with um, part E as we see it's, you know, it's still, you know, uh, look at like a cloud of gnats, but it would not be an unreasonable thing to fit a linear model that looks something like that. So both of those would be linear, but they're linear and then they've got a weak relationship. And then we take a look at part F here, and again, it looks like a linear model is a good fit. But if we compare that to C, we see that in part C, we have much less variability, or our residuals are going to be a lot smaller in C than they were in F. So in this case, we'd say it's got a moderate fit. Now, we're going to quantify that with the correlation coefficient here soon. So we have actual numbers to represent what we mean by weak and moderate and, and strong fits, OK? So let's come back over to our, our studio here. And let's go ahead and finish typing that up. And we're going to have weak, so weak T, weak relation, reasonable to do uh, a linear. 
that's uh, reasonable for a linear model. Okay, and so nice thing is again, I'm just going to come in and what? I'm going to copy that because that's the exact same answer that I've got for part E. So let's put that down here in part E. And then part F, we'll just go ahead and put that in again and say, what? Well, it's moderate instead. Okay, let, let's switch over to problem 7.6, husbands and wives part one. The Great Britain Office of Population Census and Surveys once collected data on a random sample of 170 male married couples in Britain. According according to age in years and heights converted here to inches of the husbands and wives. The scatter plots on the left show the wife's age plotted against her husband's age and the plot on the right shows the wife's height plotted against the husband's height. <clears throat> and so they ask us some questions about these plots. So describe the relationship between the husband and the wife's age. Well, let's see. Let's go back where we can actually draw on these things. So let's go back over to the whiteboard here. And let's see, what do we think we got going here? Well, it looks like to me, based on what I'm seeing in this drawing here, is that we have a strong positive linear relationship between the husband and the wife's age. In other words, it appears to be that we have um, definitely a positive uh, correlation and it appears to be strong, okay? So this is what, for the age in years, is there's a strong positive relationship, right? Okay, so let's see, let's go back to the question here again. What did they, what were they asking us? All right, so they say, describe the relationship between the husband's and wife's age. Oh, and now they wanna know what is the relationship between the husband and wife's heights, okay? So let's go back and take a look at that. So the relationship between the husband's and wife's heights, hmm, well, it looks like again, that we have a positive relation, but this time I would say it was moderate at best, okay? So we have a moderate, it's a weak, uh, you know, association between husbands and wives uh, heights. Okay, so I'm going to go moderate. Oh, maybe if I spelled it correctly, moderate to weak. So it's not, it's not exactly a a ripping strong one there, but there's there's some sort of it, and it's again, it's going to be a positive relationship. All right. Okay, so what else did they want to know from us here? I'm just go take a look at the book one more time here, and they say which plot shows stronger correlation explain your reasoning. Okay, well hopefully that's pretty straightforward that the winner here, winner, winner, chicken dinner, is that the stronger relationship is gonna be between the husband's age and the wife's age, okay? So quick uh, um, reminder of what the word correlation means. This was one of the reasons I wanted to do this problem. Is a correlation infers that there is some sort of association between the two variables. In other words, the variables have a relationship with each other. In other words, you can come in here and you can grab a husband's age and you can use that to make a good prediction of the wife's age by coming up and just grabbing the point on this, this um, regression line. In other words, this ordered pair in the regression, regression line right here does a pretty darn good job of predicting the husband's age, excuse me, the, the wife's age based upon the husband's age. Okay, so it looks like, you know, Basically, a 40-year-old man is marrying around, you know, somewhere around a 40-year-old woman, somewhere in, in that neighborhood, maybe slightly younger. Okay, so, but the thing is, is that the husband's age is not causing the wife's age. So correlation, and this is a very important thing, is a correlation does not infer causation. Those are two separate thoughts completely. And so causation, you gotta be careful with that. Causation, the way we get causation is from an experiment. Okay, so one last question on this thing. I'm going to let you guys type these up. I'm not going to make force you to watch me type again. But let's go back to the, uh, the last problem here. And it says, data on heights were originally collected in centimeters and then converted to inches. Does the conversion affect the correlation between the husband's and wife's heights? Okay, well, no, it doesn't. Hopefully from your reading, we know that the correlation coefficient is unaffected by units. And so correlation one other thing that we know about it is it's unitless. And so being as that it's unitless means that, I'm running out of space there, we're gonna kind of cram it in there, sorry about that. Unitless means that there, it doesn't matter what the units on the husband's age and the wife's age, we could change the husband's age to months and leave the wife's age in years and the correlation is gonna remember remain the same. In other words, the strength of the association. The same thing with heights, if we converted the men's heights into centimeters and left the women's height in inches, we're still gonna get the same level of correlation between them. 
Okay, well, hopefully that was informative, and we're going to go ahead and call this one a wrap, and we'll come back with another one here real quick.